and welcome to my video. Today I wanted to do a review of an, another book that I read in February. I think I just did a review of Lucy, so now I'm doing another review back to back of Wages Paid by James Carnegie. This has got a really shiny cover, so it's just reflecting all the light. So this book was another like a novella, like a short story, just like Lucy was, but it's so good. I don't know, I'm just I felt like in February I was just on a roll with good books. I was just on a roll. This was so good. This was another book that I bought in my Caribbean literature haul. This book is by James Carnegie, who is a Jamaican author, um, a Jamaican man, and it published in 1976, and it is super unique to me. I think it's unique because, first of all, it had like two ratings and like one review or something on Goodreads. What is that about? <laughs> I added my reviews so and it has two reviews. Why is no one reading these books? I don't know. They're so good. This book is so interesting. It subverted my expectations of what it would be because Wages Page takes place on one day on a slave plantation in Jamaica and it's from the perspective of five characters. Four of them are the enslaved people on the plantation and one of them is the owner. Um, and so you would think, oh my god, this is going to be heart wrenchingly brutal. It's going to be like 12 years a slave. I haven't read that, but I want to. But it's going to be like ripping my heart out. But it's not. <laughs> it was weirdly refreshing that this is a story about power and hierarchy, but in which the slave, the enslaved people are trying to maintain their positions of power within their plantation, within their lives. And it's a very convoluted revenge plot where everyone gets involved and it ends up not going well. <laughs> and it literally it starts off, the first section is morning, and then it's like mid-morning, like lunch, like afternoon or something, evening, whatever. And that's it, just one day. And even in so few pages, even across one day, we find, we get such, we, in, such unique and uh, interesting characters. So, let me explain the plot. Basically, the, the slave master, the slave owner, is called Johnson, he's called Mr. Johnson. He um, has a favorite stud, Ugh, I know, who is called, who he, who he named after himself, Johnson. So you got Mr. Johnson and Johnson. And it's not, it, that is awful that they had like a weird hierarchy among the breeders because Mr. Johnson would breed like other slave, and slave, slave owners would breed their slaves to make more workers and Johnson was like a high up good genetics potent genetics <laughs> um, man so he was like the head stud so he has quite a high ranking on the plantation so he's another character um, he had seriously pissed off a, the head cook called Mary uh, her and Mr. So him and Mr. Johnson. Johnson and Mr. Johnson are pissed off Mary. So it's Mary that starts this revenge plot and she enlists the help of a man called Wiseman, who is an Obia man. So he's seen as very powerful. Everyone's a bit scared of him. They're worried that gonna, he's going to do like, magic on them or curse them or something. So uh, she enlists his help in this revenge plot. So that's four of the characters. The fifth character is a man called Chocho, who is one of the enslaved people but his sort of position of authority is that he's one of the slave drivers so he has a whip and he has to keep all the people in the plantation in line um which must be is a weird role really conflicting and awful because he's having to hurt the people that are enslaved just like him he has no power but his job is, has power in the sense that he is one of the slave drivers rather than one of the people working in the plantation on the farm or whatever or like a cook or something so all the people in the story have power. You've got Mr. Johnson, who's the leader. He owns the slaves, you know, he owns all the people. Um, you have Johnson, who's the head stud. He has a position of power because he's liked by Mr. Johnson and because he he is producing more slaves than slave people. And then you have um, Mary, who's the head cook. So she has power over uh, the women. She has a position of authority, being the one that she feeds all the men, um, feeds all the people, actually. Yeah, Wiseman, who, because he's no be a man, he is seen as 
well, he's left alone. <laughs> he kind of just doesn't do anything on the on the plantation because no one wants to piss him off. Everyone just wants to make sure that he's in line. Like, everyone wants to make sure that like he's on their good side, um, or they're on his good side. And you have Churcho as a slave driver, and the slave himself. Like, insane. And I don't want to spoil it because I think you should read it. Like I've just given you the basics, but this you see how the stories intertwine. You see it's written from like varying perspectives. So like a paragraph might be Mary's perspective, then it might be Johnson's or Mr. Johnson's or Wiseman or Chocho's, and it's like, yeah, that's how it, it plays out. But it's just super interesting, and it felt really refreshing to read a story that was about slavery, about enslaved people on a plantation and their lives that felt authentic and realistic and still painful that didn't dwell on the oppression and the sadness and the the really painful devastating like heart breaking aspects of it and that's not me criticizing everything that does or the films and books that do uh, focus on those things because it's really important that they're paid attention to and that those voices are heard and it's listened to and witnessed by people the pain is witnessed but it's refreshing to read a book where it's not about that where actually these people, yeah, they're enslaved, they have no control of their lives, they don't even own their own lives, but they have power and they, they desperately, desperately try to cling on to the power that they have and that's what the whole book is about. Each individual using the power they have and holding on to it and trying to make sure that whatever happens benefits them the most and it's brutal, <laughs> it's brutal, but it, it, it was good to read, but it was entertaining to read. Um, it sounds messy the way I've described it, but it honestly, it's very, just really, really good, really interesting, super short, obviously I've seen, you know, a page could be just like, you know, some paragraphs of someone's perspective. I gave it four stars. I think you should read it, and more people need to read it. I can't believe how few reviews it has on Goodreads. This is, it's a, it's a Caribbean modern classic, it needs more attention made to it, and it's really, really, really good. I gave it four stars because I think I just needed a little bit, a little bit more to make it five stars. The ending is great. I like cliffhanger endings, spoiler, <laughs> but I like them. It's great. Read it. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts on Wages Paid. I just want it to have way more attention and love and hype than it does. It's nice to read something different about such a thoroughly explored topic that's been explored in so many different ways. But rather than presenting the enslaved people are so powerless, it's shown them in a position where they feel like they have some power, and that's something unique that not many, I feel like not many books explore. So, and my voice is <laughs> going, so I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you for watching, happy reading, and I'll see you around.